Like almost every project I do, this one started with breaking down material at the table saw. I took a 2x12 and ripped some 1x2s out of it for part of the bed frame, but everything else in this project is going to be made from plywood. When I picked up the plywood from the home center, I had them break it down for me to make it easier to handle, but I'm going to break it down some more with my circular saw and a straight edge before I take it to the table saw, that way it's just safer to handle. I'm following the plans that came with the Murphy bed kit for this build, which I received from Prime Tools. To keep track of all my pieces, I label them and mark them off the cut list after I cut them to final dimension. This really pays off later, especially with how many pieces this build needs. It's so nice to have everything kept track of. Now, Prime Tools sent me the hardware kit for this build. My only obligation is to build it, but I have to say I highly recommend this kit because of the instructions. They absolutely blew me away with how detailed and thorough they are. It even came with the DVD. So I'm confident that no matter what your skill level is, if you can follow directions, you can build this thing. And I'll have a link to it in the description. With all the pieces cut, I go ahead and drill all the pocket holes and then start assembly. Instead of blabbering on, I'm going to take advantage of these instructions and let them tell you what I'm doing. The reason I'm doing a Murphy bed in here is we're trying to make this room really do a lot of things. I need a space for my camera gear and items for craft shows that I go to, as well as a place to take photos of finished projects, which is really hard to do with a giant bed in the middle of the room. And my wife also sells books for Usborn, so she needed a place to keep her book inventory. And we also wanted a place to put some home office items like her printer and scanner and whatnot. So having this Murphy bed gives us the room whenever guests aren't here for me to take photos and then having all the cabinets and stuff beside it gives us room for plenty of storage. I did the stay level desk on this because I also anticipated doing a lot of work in here and this being my office. But not too long after I finished this project, I actually upgraded to a large iMac desktop that doesn't fit on it. But what I have learned in this stay level desk makes a perfect place for doing photo shoots of smaller items and my wife and I have both used it for taking photos of all kinds of items so I'm really glad that we have it. The hardware uses a combination of bolts with sleeves and wood screws to hold it on. So I'm going to take it all back off later to paint it. So I don't even bother installing the wood screws yet and that's why you see a lot of empty holes.
I apply edge banding on all the exposed edges of the plywood to get a better paint job. This is my first time using iron-on edge banding and I was surprised by how easy and fast it was. With the bed pretty much ready to be installed, I switched to building the cabinets and shelves that will flank the bed. These are my own design. One thing I have learned about building pocket hole cabinets is to pay close attention to which side you put the pocket holes on so that way they stay in. A little bit of forethought will save you having to plug any holes later. Around now is when this build started getting challenging. I realized that I cut the sides too short by about an inch, and tell you what, I really wanted to kick myself. But I was able to work around it by mounting the header a little high, and then I cut some thin furring strips to cover the gap, so it's less obvious. The next surprise came when I got the bed against the wall. At first I thought I'd somehow really messed up the sides, but it turns out this wall just has a 
crazy bow in the middle of it. You can see how much my four foot level rocks on this thing. Off camera, I use some shims to pad out the distance and screw the header into several studs to secure the bed to the wall. I opted for this because I knew the cabinet and shelves would cover the gaps between the bed and the wall, but if I wasn't installing the cabinets, I would have scribed the sides to the wall or scribed a piece of trim to the wall to cover the gaps. Also, while installing the bed, I busted the first foot piece that I made. So I made a new one from aluminum tube with some wood epoxied into it to make it more beefy. Although I have to admit, I'm kind of glad that happened because I think this one does look a lot better than the first one. With the bed and cabinets installed, I moved on to the desk. The construction of it was straightforward and I attached it to the bed with a four foot piano hinge. But when I went to install it, I realized I made the desk too wide. Another measuring error in this project. I went ahead and installed it, but then off camera I actually took it off, cut it down to the right width, and then reinstalled it. Finding the right location and length for the struts to keep the desk level was a lot of trial and error, and honestly, I'd really recommend just buying a kit for a stay level desk. You can find those. All that's left is finishing touches, like installing the doors, adding trim, and putting on pools. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this and learned something. This really is a much more approachable project than you may think, especially with the awesome instructions that came with this kit. And if you enjoyed this, please hit that like button and tell me what you think about multifunction spaces like this. I'll see you next time.